Here's John. He's walking through some problems with the churches. He's dealing with personal pain, with persecution, with trauma, with waiting, with loneliness, with wondering, with questions. And Jesus says, John, I've got something for you to see. I just firmly believe we do not spend enough time talking about heaven. I think we need to think about heaven more often. We need to talk about heaven more often. One of the reasons because I think we need to do that is, is because we are so prone to just dig into our daily nine to fives, our daily responsibilities with school and work and everything else that we've got going on that, that we tend to sink into this trap thinking that that this earth is our home, like this earth is just all that there is. And wouldn't that be very depressing if this earth is just all that there is? We need to spend more time thinking and dreaming and celebrating the reality of heaven. Uh, Randy Alcorn wrote a book by the name of Heaven, and this is what he said, and I love it. He says, nothing is more often misdiagnosed than our homesickness for heaven. What we think, uh, we think that what we want is sex, drugs, alcohol, a new job, a raise, a doctorate, a spouse, a large screen television, a new car, a cabin in the woods, a condo in Hawaii. All those are great things, yes and amen. What we really want is the person we were made for, <laughs> Jesus, and the place we were made for, heaven. Nothing less can satisfy us. Amen? We need to spend more time thinking about heaven. So John gives us this picture today. And I can't get away from it, y'all. I've been preparing it all week, and my heart has just been stirred. So look at chapter 4, verse 1 with me. This is John writing. He says, After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said these words, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. Let's put this in context for a second. Here's John. He's, he's finished writing these seven letters to these seven churches. We've been tracking with all of those churches for the past little bit, right? We've seen him point out specific things to specific churches located in strategic cities along the way. Now he's, he's finished those letters that God called him to write. And he leans back in his chair and he cracks his knuckles and he stretches his neck and his back. And as he looks up from writing these letters, he sees something. What does he see? He tells us he sees a door standing open in heaven. And when he sees this this door that's open, he hears this voice. It's the voice of Jesus that that is just incredible. It sounds like a trumpet, he tells us. And here's what it says. It says, come up here, and I will show you something. In other words, Jesus is saying, John, I have something very important that I want to show you. I have something that you're not going to want to miss. You you need to come in here, and you need to check this out. Now, remember John's situation. This is really important as we're walking through Revelation 4. John's situation is is not, not very good. I mean, he's growing older by the minute. He's, he's one of the last living apostles. He may be feeble. He's lonely. He's not on vacation on the island of Patmos where he's located. He's actually exiled there because of his faith in Christ. And so he's old, he's lonely, and he's struggling And he's written all these letters whereby he's pointing out some of the problems and some of the pain points in the church. And so he's got this burden on him as well. And so he's he's got all this pressure. And he sees all the pain and he's feeling all the persecution in his own life. Here's the cool part. What does he see when he walks through the door of heaven? He sees worship happening. The big idea here is worship. Let me show you three things today that he sees when he, when he walks through that open door and gazes into heaven. God gives him this vision. Here's the first thing that he sees as he, as he does that. He sees the worship of the one who is on the throne. 
the worship of the one who is on the throne. Look at verse 2. He says, At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. That's the first thing that he sees. He says, just this worship, this, this incredible attention and affection for the one who is seated on the throne. Now, throne in the word throne in Revelation 4 is mentioned 10 times. In the book of Revelation alone, the word throne is mentioned 46 times. Do you think God is trying to show lonely, afflicted, in pain, walking through distress? John, the apostle, you think God's trying to show him something? by just constantly reiterating this idea that God is still seated on his throne? Man, I do. I think that's a major image here. This is a callback uh, to some verses in the Old Testament. Remember, when we're reading Revelation, we always have to flash back to the Old Testament context. Remember Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah says, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lift it up. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Remember, we studied Daniel before Revelation, and these, these books are connected in multiple ways, but listen to what Daniel says in, in chapter 7, verse 9. He says, As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat, and his clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool, and his throne was, a, was fiery flames. So here he is, here's John, he's, he's walking through some problems with the churches, he's dealing with personal pain, with persecution, with trauma, with waiting, with loneliness, with wondering, with questions. And Jesus says, John, I've got something for you to see. God is seated on his throne. All is well and everything is going to be just fine because God is in total control. He is the king, seated, crowned. He's high and lifted up and he's perfect in his power. All is going to be okay. I know you have problems and I know you have pain and I know internally you're really asking some things, but here's the truth. God's on his throne. I like what Warren Wearsby says. He says, no matter what may happen on the earth, God is on his throne and is in complete control. Isn't that good news? <laughs> Several years ago, my wife and I lived in Tampa, Florida, and we're serving this great church there. And um, we get a call in the middle of the night, like it's in the middle of the night. And uh, it's, it's a news report about our senior pastor. Our senior pastor uh, was a great guy, and he was a pilot as well, so he flew his, his plane, and it was, I never will forget it, it was the day after Mother's Day that we get this call. He, he preached a Mother's Day message that morning at the church, and he and his oldest son uh, flew to North Carolina from Tampa to go spend Mother's Day with his mom. Only on the way there, uh, the weather got bad, and uh, Forrest and his son Preston flew into the side of a mountain. We're immediately killed. We get this phone call, and we're like, what is happening? Man, you talk about grief. The church is just in, in grief. Uh, we just couldn't believe the news. It was just a shock. Everyone assembles for the funeral. And man, there were just thousands and thousands and thousands of people at this funeral. It was huge, and it was incredible. And um, everybody loved Forrest. He was such a great pastor, a great man. And I remember, I never will forget this, our executive pastor, George Thomason, he stood up to preach that funeral message. I don't even know how he did it. But he got there, he preached that message, and he said, listen, so many of you are asking the question, where is God in all this? Where is God in all this? Like, good question. I never will forget what George said. He says, Hey, church, don't worry. We know exactly where God is. He said he is on his throne. Sometimes we need to be reminded in our life, 
in hard times, in tragic times, in desperate times. Listen, God is on his help me throne. That makes a difference, doesn't it? This is what Jesus wanted John to see. Like, come see what's happening. Like, right now, on August 11th, 2024, guess what's happening in heaven? God is on his throne, and there is a whole host around him watching that, the, the truth that God is on his throne, and worshiping like crazy, the one in total control. John needed a picture of that in his own life. Maybe you and I need a picture of that today.